Fiona and Cake, fan fiction, or something far more insidious. Nah, I'm just joshing. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed uh, this run of Adventure Time, Fiona and Cake. I thought it had some kind of interesting things to add to the story. It still left me a little confused. How do I feel about the whole thing? But I am the man you may know as Z from the podcast, Our Reviews Will Kill You, which you can catch anytime you like on Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, or catch it while we live stream it here. On YouTube, 7.30 p.m. Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time. But let's talk a little bit about Fiona and Cake and how it all made me feel. That's really what this is about. How did it make you feel? Um, first, let's take a look at what they're saying. Will it have a second season? What I liked about the show is that it was a very, it seemed like a very secluded story or like it had its own story to tell which is good it wasn't there's no click or spin-off bait i mean there's kind of a spin-off bait but there's there's really just it's a self-contained story so they're not sure if there's going to be another one i would I, I think there's a fan base out there for this let's start with the easy part is the long con convoluted story of adventure time and how we got to here. If you are not familiar with Adventure Time, you will not understand this. You're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to get any of it. I'm going to assume you're an Adventure Time fan if you came here. So growing up watching Adventure Time, this left me feeling strangely confused because I don't know if I ever got the send-off to Adventure Time that I wanted. I think there's 283 episodes of Adventure Time, which <laughs> you would think I would have got the send-off I wanted. Uh, but what got interesting for me for the show is it really started off as like a children's show that just kind of kept growing and growing and sort of came up with this like overarching plot and deep ancient history and all these different things. And it got cosmic and strange. So we can actually, this article from Polygon is, is interesting because the way they talk about it, you know, it's it's been reviewed very well. Everybody seems to like it. I don't dislike it. I don't love it. Um, but let's talk about the plot briefly. Uh, the world starts in Fiona's world, where Cake is a normal cat, and she has her miscreant group of friends, and she wants a world of magic, but she doesn't really know what that entails. Eventually, Cake goes through a portal because this story is tied to uh, Ice King, Simon Petrikov, who is in the far future of Ooh. Well, not the. I guess it's not the far future. It's like 30 years from the conclusion of uh, Adventure Time, give or take. Not exactly sure where it takes place in time because everything's a little convoluted. But either way, um, Simon is basically living in a zoo about... How, did, how was it in the old-timey times? What we come to find out is that Fiona eventually travels through a portal into Ooh and, and gets, well, she doesn't get any powers, but Cake starts to get powers. She's no longer a normal cat. She becomes kind of weird space cat. But what we've always known is that Fiona and Cake are the fiction of the Ice King. Or in this, it's been, I guess, retconned to actually been Prismos, who's responsible for creating worlds. He created Fiona and Cake, put it in Ice King's head, and then moved it along. So... We're not entirely sure how this all fits together because Fiona's world, is, she's normal and there's a normal cat. And then I guess by the time the Ice King got it, he distorted it into a version of Finn and Jake, just gender swapped, what have you. So a bunch of adventures later, they're trying to make her world real because her world is not real. And there is a cosmic entity known as the Scarab going to destroy her world because it is, it's a forbidden world. It is not real. And they go to a bunch of different alternate dimensions, eventually chasing for the for the power of the crown. And Simon comes to realize what his relationship was with Betty was. If for those of you who aren't aware, Ice King had a girlfriend slash fiance slash whatever who's actually like a version of God or something like that. <laughs> whatever, man. Gets a little weird. And then you get 
the resolution at the end. Spoiler alert. Uh, I'm assuming you watch this. So, you know, you know what happened. But it's it's interesting. And I guess that that ultimately comes to my thought process around this. So what this article tries to outline here from Polygon is that it was started by Pendleton Ward and he has nothing to do with the show anymore. It didn't even look like he was a producer. I don't really, maybe he sold it and walked away. Not really sure, but it apparently was his student work about a princess rescuing boy adventurer with a sword, a talking dog, and an ice slinging uh, nemesis. By season three, they started allowing, he he started to uh, add, you know, expand out the backstories and secondary characters. And then by season seven, or season five, he stepped down as showrunner and I guess moved away from the show. And it just kept going and got more and more ridiculous and kind of out there. And it never really, I, I, it's just, it got challenging at times. Some of the episodes were really good. Some were not, you're not really sure what's going on. Um, but what's, what's interesting is they do the, this Fiona and Cake thing. And part of my thought process here is that Fiona and Cake truly is fan fiction. So this to me seemed like they were trying to justify that fan fiction can become real fiction. And I know Adventure Time at some point became a sandbox for other people after the you know creator stepped away. So it's weird because they're, and they're even saying it here before I even finished reading this article, that they're talking about it being fan fiction. At the end of the show, they go, oh, we've been canon. We've been put into canon. It's a real universe. It's its own universe. And on some level, justifying fan fiction seems strange to me because while I'm okay with fan fiction, I feel like fan fiction can go too far you know, I guess there's both sides of this scale. You either have it where it's too much and it's shipping. And then sometimes you get things like 50 shades of gray, which, which essentially was fan fiction, which I'm not saying is good, but I think it's still a worthwhile (laughs) statement to have out there. So I guess that's what it kind of means. And it's weird because I don't really consider, especially that Fiona and Jake isn't like, or Fiona and Cake isn't like a really a girly version of the show. They're just different and they approach problems a little bit differently than Finn and Jake, which I think is interesting. So they have their own stamp on this. It's a it's a little weird because you don't really know what Fiona wants. There's no like I don't think she ever has a character arc would be what I'm saying where maybe Kate kind of has a character arc where she wanted some sort of independence, but I mean, Fiona's world gets saved because she is okay with living in it. I guess that's an arc. Like you don't want your own, you don't want to live in a fantasy world. You want to live in your own world. I I guess that's the arc. If that's what you want to go for the, the person who truly went through a, most the biggest arc with Simon and it really is Simon's story about his relationship with his soulmate it, which is also bizarre too if you know the history of the show so I'm still at odds at where I think about this part of me is like this is just them trying to justify fan fiction although I kind of prefer it that they if they had never introduced it as the Ice King's fan fiction I think I would have preferred Fiona and Cake that way instead of them starting as fan somebody else's fiction and you know him like shipping his frenemies where he just made a a more palatable version of Finn and Jake for him for the Ice King so I I don't know how I feel about the whole thing let me know how you feel about it did you enjoy it I I liked it I'm not gonna say I disliked it and I would definitely recommend it if you are an Adventure Time fan uh, the other qualms I have, some of the characters' voices are different. Obviously, Justin Roiland's characters are all gone. They were never that important. They were more just like, 
the lemon grabs just screamed at you. And while I, I enjoy that character, it didn't need to be in this. So then having a replacement for it with a poor imitation, I thought was a waste of time. And then the story of Pr Prismo has a big part in this. And Nam Namja Kumnami, I'm sorry, the guy from The Eternals. I thought his voice was amazing as Prismo. And for them, according to him, he never got a call. His uh, the the Adventure Time people said, well, we reached out to your management and they never called us back. So he said he was kind of disappointed about that. I'm disappointed that he didn't get to do the voice. So all together, I mean, I think it's a good accompaniment. It expands the lore a little bit. I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, but I also still am kind of curious why they went from the direction of they had to justify fan fiction because you're looking for themes. There's also something that I don't understand and I'm just taking a stab at this. They kept referencing Cheers and I don't understand why. Maybe somebody can explain that to me in the comments below. They kept referencing Cheers and I'm assuming because the value of the Cheers spinoffs, they were trying to justify like, hey, Cheers was a solid show and for those of you who don't know, Frasier is uh, one of the long, a very long-standing show, which is a spin-off of Cheers, so famous that it came back twice or three times at this point. Used to be one of the most popular shows on television. Might even be more popular than the original Cheers at this point. Hard to say, but um, the characters are definitely pretty iconic. So. What do you guys think? Uh, am I right about my assessment that they're just trying to say like there's value to spinoffs and spinoffs aren't just fan fiction? Is that the ultimate story that we're being told here? You tell me in the comments below because I'm still not sure, but I am on to the next one.